Welcome inside the Pixel 11 studios on this debate night in New York. Taking center stage tonight, incumbent Republican Mike Lawler and Democratic challenger Mondaire Jones. They are the two top candidates in a critical House race that is drawing nationwide attention. Only one of them will represent New York's 17th congressional district, including all of Rockland and Putnam counties, as well as parts of Westchester and Dutchess counties in the next Congress. I'm Dan Manorino, and for the next hour, I'll be your moderator for this live debate. And candidates, let's briefly go through the rules. Each of you will get 60 seconds to answer a question. And for any follow-ups, you will get an additional 30 seconds. And you will also get 30 seconds for those rebuttals if you request them and you are called upon. The ringing of a bell will be used to signal that your time has expired. There it is. And with that business out of the way, let us begin. And Mr. Lawler, as the leader in our most recent poll, you receive the first question. We're going to begin, Mr. Lawler, on the topic of immigration, which voters say is one of the top issues for them this cycle. Now, you have said you did not support the failed Senate bipartisan border bill, saying it would have enshrined catch and release into law. But can you point to an aspect of that bill, Mr. Lawler, that you do support as a border solution? You have 60 seconds here. Well, thanks, Dan. This is the most important issue for many voters because we have a crisis. Uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris reversed 94 executive orders of President Trump. They reinstituted the Obama era policy of catch and release into effect, which allowed for over 10 and a half million migrants to come into the United States. Mondaire Jones wanted to defund ICE. In a debate back in 2020 when he was running for Congress, he said, yes, I support defunding ICE. Uh, it is fundamentally why we're dealing with this crisis to begin with. Uh, last year, House Republicans passed H.R. 2, the single strongest border security measure that would have increased border personnel, increased border wall, reinstated remain in Mexico, uh, and would have begun the process of deporting criminal aliens. Mondaire Jones opposed deporting criminal aliens and, in fact, wanted to give blanket amnesty to criminals uh, here in New, uh, the United States. That is a fundamental problem. The bipartisan border bill that uh, was introduced in the Senate did not have bipartisan support. In fact, that six is, Democrats that, voted against it. That is time. It. But there, is there one aspect of it, just briefly here, 15 seconds, that you would support? Well, of course, increase uh, border personnel uh, as well as court personnel. But that's in part what we did as part of H.R. 2 and the Dignity Act, which I introduced uh, as an original co-sponsor in the House. Okay, Mr. Lawler, thank you. Mr. Jones, I'll give you time with, with the question here. And when it comes to that Senate bipartisan border bill, you often say Republicans blocked it, and that led to further issues at the border. So can you give me one specific aspect of the bill that should be implemented immediately? You have 60 seconds here. Listen, uh, Mike Lawler is making excuses for why he's blocking something that was about to become law until Donald, Tr Donald Tr Tr Trump told him to block that legislation. It is very tough legislation. It's legislation that would hire more Border Patrol agents. It's legislation that would hire more judges to adjudicate claims of asylum. It would even give brand new authorities to the President of the United States to literally shut down the border in the event it is overwhelmed. And we are absolutely dealing with this crisis in the state of New York. In fact, earlier this week, sadly, uh, a, a child was cruelly murdered by a gunman who illegally is in the United States of America. Mike Lawler continues to block legislation that would directly have prevented, potentially, that cruel murder in Somers, which is a town in Westchester County. Uh, Mike Lawler also has voted to defund ICE. He did it in April of 2023 uh, to cut funding for our border security. So one of the things that I would like to see implemented immediately is more Border Patrol agents in that legislation, that needs to become law yesterday. Uh, Mr. Jones, thank you. Mr. Lawler, 30 seconds The here. level of lying is remarkable. Uh, Homeland Security was blocked off as part of uh, Limit, Save, Grow. But second of all, you're the one who supported allowing criminal aliens to remain in the United States, including those that were arrested on drunk driving, which the killer of that young boy in Somers was arrested for drunk driving. You wanted to prevent deportations for drunk driving. You are blocking so don't sit legislation here. Do not right sit now. First of all, the bill never made it through the Senate. So how am I blocking because a bill told that, that would be never on arrival, made it through the Senate? Because you told Mr. them Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Jones, hold on one second, please. Is Senator Gentlemen, we're not going to do this to tell the truth is disgraceful and accept any responsibility for the fact that you wanted you have to been defund in Congress gentlemen, for two years. Gentlemen, we're going to do this. Failed to secure We're going to give each other 30 seconds. Gentlemen, nobody can hear you talk. It is well established. Nobody can hear either of you talk right now, okay? So we're going to have one at a time. Mr. Lawler, your time has expired. Mr. Jones, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, but let's not talk over each other. It is well established. 
both in the press and among Republican senators like Senator Langford, who co-authored this legislation, that the only reason it is not law today, this bill that would secure our southern border, is because Donald Trump told people like Mike Lawler to abandon that legislation. In fact, he joined Mike Johnson in saying it would be dead on arrival. The fact that he would lie about something that is obvious and in plain sight, as though this has not been extensively reported on, and make excuses for while in his two years in Congress as a freshman, he has done nothing to secure our southern border, which has now resulted in the death of someone okay, in our district. Only, is Mr. Absolutely Mr. Lawler, hold on one second. Mr. Qualified. Jones, Mr. Jones, thank you. Mr. The, Lawler, I'm coming to you yeah. right now with, the, with we're saying on this topic. Let me ask the question first. You were quoted by the Journal News as saying, quote, are you going to mass deport everybody? No, it's unrealistic and it's not right, end quote. So judging by your own criteria, Mr. Lawler, what is the realistic and right way to deal with un documented immigrants who are already here. I'll give you 60 seconds here. Again, six Democrats in the United States Senate voted against this bill that you referenced. Not a single Republican voted for it. The Democrats control the Senate. They couldn't pass a bill. The only bill that passed in Congress, this Congress, was H.R. 2, which actually would have secured the border. Look. I co-authored the Dignity Act, which is the first bipartisan immigration reform legislation in over a decade. It would deal with the border, it would deal with the undocumented, and it would deal with the legal immigration system, which is fundamentally broken. My wife is an immigrant. We have been through this system. It needs to be reformed. You're not going to mass deport everyone. You have people who have been here for 20 years whose children and grandchildren are citizens. But those who came here illegally and committed crimes should be deported. The problem is Mondaire Jones, who now suddenly uh, seems to have amnesia about his previous statements, and you can go to RadicalMondaire.com to see them in his own words. The fact is that Mondaire Jones, Mondaire Jones supported allowing blanket amnesty for criminal aliens. Yes, Mr. Lawler, thank you. And Mr. Jones, I'm yes, staying on topic and I'm coming to you right now. So the bipartisan border deal would have resulted in beefed up security and more border agents. But in 2021, while in Congress, you co-signed a letter that demanded the removal of U.S. military personnel from the border and the removal of some barriers at the border. So can you clarify your position on security at the border? You have 60 seconds. Yeah, here. let's be very clear. I voted for record levels of border security. At the time, it was record levels in those appropriations bills that I supported, every single one of them. So this attempt in the 11th hour to distort my record based on what he says were comments made before I was ever elected to Congress is clearly at odds with what is actually the facts. Compare my legislative record of voting for record levels of border security with his record of having voted to defund border security. He did it, as I mentioned, among other times, in April of 2023. Wrong. Now, he says that this is wrong. It is. But the fact is, he's lying about it, and all you have to do is look it up. He has voted to cut funding for any number of Department of Homeland Security initiatives. Homeland Security when you was vote, blocked off. No, I know you have it, this is very clear. Clear. This, this is, is very right clearly in the legislation that he voted no, for. No, it's not. And it's despicable that he would lie as though we can't go research this information on our own. And I would encourage the press to do it because he makes us less safe when he plays partisan politics that results in the defunding of the federal government. Yeah. He's not just done it, by the way, in April of 2023. He did it on September 29th, 2023. So Mr. Jones, well, thank you. Folks, Mr. Lawler, I'll give radical, you 30 seconds here. You can go to RadicalMondaire.com and listen to everything he has previously said on the matter. Now, he'll say, oh, this is something dumb I said when I was younger. No, this was four years ago ago when he was running for Congress. When he actually became a member of Congress, he called ICE agents Talk terrorists. He Congress. called ICE agents terrorists and said that they are inflicting unfathomable cruelty on uh, immigrants. Guess what? The unfathomably cruel thing is the boy in Somers that got killed because of an because illegal of immigrant that you allowed, border you allowed security to stay in this country. That is pending in you the Congress right now. Gentlemen, that you were abandoned you because you've always been the need to Donald Trump. That would not Trump. allow Nobody, for the deportation of somebody who was arrested for Trump. You are going to do this an apology for not doing anything to secure our southern border. And you border. owe them an apology. Look, the cameras are going to cut away for you if we're going to do this all night. We need to stay on track, Mr. Jones. I'm going to give you each time to talk about topics, but we're not going to cross talk over each other where nobody can understand what you are saying. We're going to move on to the next question. Oh, Mr. Jones, I'm going to give you 30 seconds here to respond to that, and then we are moving on to the next topic. Look, Mike Lawler pretends like he's not been in Congress for the past two years, and the reason he's doing that is because he's part of the least productive, most chaotic Congress since the Civil War, by all objective metrics. So I get why he's trying to deflect from the fact that he has responsibility for the things that has happened that have happened over the past two years. 
Why is he abandoning and why is he blocking a bipartisan border security bill that could have prevented the murder of Michael Raimondi in the town of Somers earlier this week? He is the sitting congressman of the United States of America, but he wants to go years and years back to try to pin me to something he says I said, okay, even Mr. though Jones, subsequently that is time. I was in Congress. Me, that is time. The very Mr. Jones, that is time. I'm going to I'm gonna stay on that topic, Mr. Lawler. I'm going to stay on topic right just here. Did that for We're me. staying with immigration here for questions that brings the issue home to the district. The East Rampo School District has been plagued by financial aid and academic problems, and it has seen an influx of more than 1,000 additional students, nearly all of whom are migrants. Now, that's according to the New York Civil Liberties Union. The state ordered the school board to increase taxes by more than 4% for the academic year. So, Mr. Jones, coming to you first on this one, do you agree with the tax increase, and are more tax increases like this needed at the federal level to pay for the migrant crisis? 60 seconds. Look, the <laughs> local school districts should not be shouldering the, bo the burden of our migrant crisis. Again, this is a crisis that could be resolved if my opponent had the political courage to stand up to Donald Trump. But the fact is, he always bends the knee to Donald Trump. That's why he's not voting for this bipartisan border security legislation that's pending in Congress right now. It's why he attended that Madison Square Garden hate fest on Sunday of this week and refused to issue an apology for the ridiculous, absurd, bigoted things that were said by speaker after speaker. It's why he's still supporting Donald Trump for the third consecutive presidential election cycle, despite the fact that his longest serving chief of staff said that Donald Trump called pres uh, praised Hitler repeatedly. And as recently as within the past 24 hours, Donald Trump has called for the assassination of Liz Cheney. So these problems that we're talking about are problems that Mike Lawler has made worse during his tenure in Congress. It's been his failure to rise to the occasion to secure our southern border. But he doesn't ever want to take responsibility for the fact that he's been Mr. doing Jones, nothing in thank Congress. Thank you. And Mr. Lawler, I'll come to you. But Mr. Jones, just to, just to follow up here, do you agree with the tax increase? I do not agree with any tax increases borne by school district or anyone else for the purpose of providing services okay. to people here who are here illegal. That was okay. the framing of your question. We're going to leave it there. Thank you. And Mr. Lawler, the same question to you now. Do you agree with the tax increase? And are more tax increases like this needed at the federal level to pay for the migrant crisis? 60 seconds. That's an interesting response by Mondaire. He actually supported legislation that would have taken school taxes from some districts and moved them to others. Uh, the fact is uh, that this crisis is borne out because of the disastrous policy decisions by Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to reinstate catch and release, which has allowed 10 and a half million migrants to come into the country, many of them sent to New York, not just by Texas and Florida, but by the federal government. Joe Biden was flying migrants to Westchester County Airport while Mondaire was a member of Congress, and he said not one word against it. The fact is that sanctuary state and city policies like we have in New York are a disaster. They are taking your tax dollars and providing free housing, free clothing, free food, free education for illegal immigrants. In the East Ramapo School District, you've had over 2,000 students, migrant students, come into a district that is already struggling financially. The state has refused to deal with the responsibility of this, and instead they sent $4 billion to New York City while doing nothing to support the East Ramapo School District. Mr. Lawler, going to So, no, it I don't support the tax Understood, increase. Mr. It was Lawler. wrong, but the sanctuary state and city policy. Mr. Lawler, we're going to have to end. leave it there. That is time, and for the sake of time, we have a lot of topics to get to, gentlemen. We're going to move on right now to comments made this week in New York that have made headlines all over the country. They were made by a couple of early speakers at former President Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden. Many say the comments about Puerto Rico and women were disrespectful. Mr. Lawler, you condemned those comments, but former President Trump did not. Should he? You have 30 seconds. The former president did denounce the comments about Puerto Rico uh, and said that is not reflective of the campaign. I denounced that when it, it came his out. His campaign said that. Well, on behalf of the former president. At the end of the day, uh, what was said by that comic was wrong. Uh, but then you have Joe Biden just two days later calling Trump's supporters garbage. Uh, look, the rhetoric across the country needs to stop. My opponent called cops racist, white supremacist. Not true. He called all Republicans fascists. Not he called true. ICE agents terrorists. Not yes, true. it is. You can all go to RadicalMondaire.com. 
and watch. Is Elon Musk paying for radical monitoring? Well, you know what? When you lose next week, you can delete your account. I'm going to get the next question right now, Mr. Jones. I got to respond to something that he just said when he called me out for something that didn't happen. Listen, let me tell you something. It did happen. You you said in your question that he denounced what happened at Madison Square Garden. That is not what happened. He issued a non-apology that referred to one of several bigoted statements that were made by a comedian that was allowed to go on state that was allowed to happen because they vetted the program before the Madison Square Garden rally took place. This is a larger problem. There was anti-Semitic behavior at that event by speakers. Uh, there was other racism. There was certainly misogyny. And he is supporting Donald Trump for the third consecutive presidential election. He is going to be a reliable vote for his dangerous Project 2025 agenda. And in Rockland County a couple of days ago, he said to re-elect him so there's a Republican majority that will Mr. do Jones. the bidding of Donald Trump Mr. Next Jones, thank you, Mr. Lawler. 30 seconds. You know, in the last debate, uh, my wife asked my daughter, Juliana, what she thought of your performance. And my two and a half year old said it was disgusting. So when my two and a half year old calls you out for the constant lies and absurdity, uh, that says something, Mondaire. The fact is that you are the one who has said extreme radical things. You've called cops racist and white supremacist. Mike, you've called ICE agents terrorists. Everyone saw how you've called every were in that Republican last debate. And for that part reason, among others, they movement. thought that I won that it's debate. It's pretty okay, because you interrupted me it's every single time. Mr. Lawler, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, I'm coming lies. to you right now uh, to, 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 to the question for you right now on a controversial comment made by President Biden. He has come under fire for seemingly calling all of Mr. Trump's supporters garbage. Do you condemn President President Biden's remarks, and should he apologize? 30 seconds here. So the president has clarified statements that he made earlier this week that I haven't paid close attention to, but I will say this. Anybody who is referring to Donald Trump's supporters as garbage is completely inappropriately speaking. All right? We need to have a civil debate in this conversation, a debate about democracy itself. And yes, uh, it means that you get to say things about Donald Trump, who has called for the termination of our Constitution and for the jailing of his political opponents, and for the pardoning of the January 6th insurrectionists whose conduct led to the deaths of several law enforcement officers, and you certainly get to call out okay. Donald, Mike Lawler, excuse me, Mike Lawler, okay, for supporting him for the third consecutive presidential Thank election you. cycle Thank and you, for Mr. being Jones. a reliable vote and for his gentlemen, agenda. for the sake of time, we're going to move on to a top issue according to voters in the district. It is the number one issue according to our most recent poll, and that is the economy. We have seen some signs that the economy is improving, but in our most recent PIX11 Emerson College, the Hill poll, half of those polled said they are worse off than they were a year ago. Only 18 percent said that they are actually better off. So, Mr. Jones, how would you grade the current economy, and what would you do in Congress to improve that grade? 60 seconds. Yeah, Mike Lawler was in Congress a year ago. In fact, he's been in office for the past two years, but he's got nothing to show for it by way of improving our economic system here. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The price of goods is way too high. I talked about corporate greed uh, at a, a debate on Candidates Forum on Sunday. And despite serving on the House Financial Services Committee, he completely misstated what the rate of inflation is right now, which is roughly back to where it was pre-pandemic. But the problem is corporate greed by the meat processing companies and the oil and gas companies who are charging a fortune. That's why the price of goods is about 20 percent higher than it was before the pandemic. And we need a member of Congress who's willing to stand up to corporations rather than do the bidding of corporations like what he's been doing. By the way, he's a former oil and gas lobbyist, so it makes sense that he wouldn't do anything to decrease the price of oil and gas. We have to make sure we continue to lower costs. It's why I oppose his efforts to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which would raise health insurance premiums and once again allow insurance companies to deny coverage with people, to people with pre-existing conditions. I'm also going to do something to restore the SALT deduction, which his president, okay, with Jones. Republican majorities, helped cap at $10,000, which Jones, crushed middle class Mr. Jones, thank you, district. Mr. Lawler, I'm coming to you. But Mr. Jones, I didn't hear you give the current economy a grade. Do you have a grade for the current economy? Look, this economy has to be better. I know Is this. Personally, a grade of, of what? A through F. Look, people are struggling in this broken economy, and we need a member of Congress who knows what okay, it's like Mr. to Jones, struggle the way I do. Thank you. Who's going to be on. willing to do something about Mr. it? Mr. Jones, thank you. And Mr. Lawler, same question to you. How would you grade the current economy, and what would you do in Congress to improve that grade? 60 seconds to you, Mr. Lawler. Look, under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the economy is an F. Uh, it is an absolute disaster. Uh, prices are up between 20 and 100 percent on groceries, on energy, on rent, on mortgages. Everybody is feeling the crushing burden. How did we get here? Mondaire Jones and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris increased federal spending by over five trillion dollars in two years. That's what gave us record inflation. That's what drove up the cost of groceries, of housing, of rent, of utilities. 
You know, Mondaire Jones said it is demonstrably true that he agrees with the Democratic Socialists, and he talks that is like not it. True. When he, Mondaire, that is your not own true. words. That is Stop not true. lying. These are your own words. Go to radicalmondaire.com to see it. The fact is that Mondaire Jones doesn't know the first thing about reducing cost for Americans. He wants to raise taxes. He wants to give us the highest tax increase in American history. He wants to raise corporate taxes to 28 percent. That will crush the economy and raise prices even further. Mr. Lawler, thank you. Mr. When Jones, I was in Congress, seconds. I passed the Inflation Reduction Act. Which, which did not already, reduce which already inflation. Which already the price seconds. of insulin it did not for reduce seniors inflation. on Medicare. And it exploded and $35 Medicare. Dollars a month since January 2023. Part D Stop interrupting exploding. me. And starting next year, no one on Medicare is going to have to pay more than $2,000 annually out of pocket for their prescriptions. He opposes that. He wants to raise prescription drug costs for seniors. I resent the idea that somehow he knows about and cares more about uh, this project of lowering costs for working people. I also want to protect the Affordable Care Act. He wants to repeal it so That's that insurance false. companies absolutely can false. You are on the record doing this. You no, are on the not. record it's doing this. False. Mr. You Jones, are on the record doing Mr. This. Jones, thank you. Let me just remind you guys, I'm going to give you the time. We yep. cannot talk over each other. We want to hear the points that you're both making. Mr. Lawler, 30 seconds. Look, the Inflation Reduction Act did not actually reduce inflation. In fact, it exploded it. Uh, the only reason inflation has come down is because interest rates have gone up. And as a result, you're getting less and paying more. Your mortgages have gone up, for instance, in Rockland and Westchester County, up $1,000 a month because interest rates increased to 30-year highs. So Mondaire does not understand the economy, and that's part of the problem here. He wants to continue to increase spending. He wants to raise taxes and cripple our economy. And by the way, the Inflation Reduction Act cut Medicare to uh, do the Green Mr. New Lawler, Deal as you. part of it, and when did it Mr. will Lawler, explode. Thank you. When did Mr. Lawler, it will explode. Thank you. Mr. Lawler, thank you, Mr. It will Jones. Explode for Medicare the sake of time, we're going to move on to taxes right now. You think there was a Green New Deal Mr. Jones, place. thank you. We're going to move God. on to taxes right now, and both presidential candidates have come out with multiple economic proposals during the campaign that economists say could really expand the deficit. So, Mr. Lawler, former President Trump has stated he intends to eliminate taxes on tips, overtime and Social Security benefits, and also to provide a tax credit for family caregivers who take care of a parent or a loved one. So how do you accomplish all of that tax relief without driving up the deficit or cutting from key programs? You have 60 seconds. Well, first of all, we don't have a revenue problem. Under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, revenue is at an all-time high. We do have a spending problem. Mondaire Jones increased federal spending by $5 trillion. In this Congress, we started to rein that back in. We are saving taxpayers $2.1 trillion over the next 10 years. We have capped federal spending at 1% growth for the next six. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act expires next Congress. I have made it very clear, we will be lifting the cap on salt. I will not support any tax bill that doesn't lift the cap on salt. We will be renegotiating a tax bill, including looking at provisions that have been outlined by uh, former President Trump. And if Kamala Harris wins, we will be looking at provisions that she has outlined. But the bottom line is you will have to compromise. I have shown an ability to do that. I've been rated the fourth most bipartisan member of Congress. He rated 381st. You have to negotiate a tax bill, but we have to focus on cutting taxes for hardworking middle class families, working class families, make reduce the cost of living and make sure people okay, can Mr. afford Lawler. to live in states like New Mr. York. Mr. Lawler, thank you. Mr. Jones, I'm going to come to you right now with a question. Vice President Harris has stated that she intends to provide $25,000 in relief to first time home buyers, expand the child tax credit and expand Medicare benefits to, so program covers the cost of long term care for older Americans. So how do you accomplish all of this? that relief for taxes without driving up the deficit or cutting from key programs. 60 so, seconds to you. I appreciate the question. I've got to respond to a lot of uh, disinformation that my opponent just put out there. Uh, he praises that December 2017 tax legislation that gave a tax cut to billionaires like Elon Musk, his biggest funder in this campaign. Uh, but in that, in that tax legislation was a $10,000 cap on the state and local tax deduction. When that went into place, it crushed middle class homeowners in the lower Hudson Valley. It raised our tax bills by thousands of dollars every single year since. And Donald Trump has says he wants to renew that legislation. You cannot believe Mike Lawler when he says that somehow if you give him another term, then he'll really do something about the SALT deduction because he has had a term as a majority maker. That means he has significant leverage to get legislation that he wants passed. 
But so long as Republicans have majority in Congress, have a majority in Congress, you're never going to see the salt deduction fully restored or even modestly improved. Uh, so that's the first thing. Of course, we need to expand Medicare to include dental, vision, hearing, and long-term care. Of course, we need to make the expanded child tax credit permanent, which I, okay. which I did temporarily, and then Republicans Mr. opposed Jones. it, and so it's since expired. But we have to cut child Mr. poverty. Mr. Jones, i got to leave the country. answer there, but I am going to stay with you on this topic. I understand I'm coming to you next, Mr. Lerner. We're staying on the economy here, but a follow-up for you, Mr. Jones. Vice President Harris has pitched raising the corporate tax rate. So how do you ensure that doesn't negatively impact workers and consumers who are already struggling? A 30-second answer The corporate here. tax rate was 35 percent before that December 2017 tax legislation went into place. It's now 21 percent, which is lower than what a lot of middle-class homeowners pay. The vice president has said she is offering a modest, moderate compromise when she says go to 28 instead of all the way back to 35, where it was in December 2017. I think that's perfectly reasonable. And I think Americans, working people, agree with that. You know the people who don't agree with it? Elon Musk, who's supporting him. Jeff Bezos and other folks like that. But we have to make sure that we have a member of Congress who cares about the plight of working people. Okay, of Mr. Working Jones. people in the lower house. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Lawler, a follow up for you here. You've defended the use of tariffs by the former president, saying they've helped keep Iran and China in check. So, how do you ensure they don't increase costs for Americans who are already struggling? You have 30 seconds on this one. Folks, what you just heard is that Mondaire Jones endorsed the largest tax increase in American history. Uh, the fact is, and I know you're very upset about Elon Musk, so when you lose on Tuesday, you can delete your Twitter account and don't worry about it anymore. Is it Twitter but the or fact is, is uh, at the end of the day, uh, Mondaire Jones wants to raise taxes on middle class families, on corporations, on small businesses. It will crush the economy. It will drive up costs further. Tariffs are used as a tool. All right. And this administration, the Biden-Harris administration, actually kept in place the tariffs that were put in by President Trump on China because that they time. are effective in that combating time, China's trade policies. That is time. And we are going to move on right now to the widening Mideast crisis. And we're approaching a U.S.-imposed November 12th deadline for Israel to improve the flow of aid into Gaza. The secretaries of state and defense wrote in a letter that, quote, urgent and sustained action, end quote, must be taken. If it isn't, armed shipment to Israel could be suspended. Mr. Lawler, coming to you first here, should the U.S. follow through on its threat to suspend military assistance until aid is surged into Gaza? 60 seconds here. No. Uh, the fact is that both Israel and the United States have brought aid to Gaza. Hamas, a terrorist organization, continues to refuse to distribute to uh, the Palestinian people. They use the Palestinian people as human shields, uh, operating in schools, in hospitals. UNRWA, which is through the United Nations and supposed to be helping get this assistance out, uh, has been corrupted by Hamas. Uh, and so I fought to defund UNRWA in this Congress, and we did. Mondaire Jones, in the last debate, uh, did not denounce his previous call for Israel to return to pre-1967 borders, for Jerusalem to be divided in two. Uh, he did not denounce his previous support for the Iran nuclear deal or calling for lifting sanctions on Iran. The fact is, lifting sanctions on Iran is what created this mess because the illicit oil trade to the tune of $200 billion is what funded Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and other terrorist organizations. Mondaire's pro-Israel position is Mr. a Lawler. disgrace. Mr. Lawler, thank you. And Mr. Jones, I'll give you time to respond to that in this question. Should the U.S. follow through on its threat to suspend military assistance until aid is surged into Gaza? You also get 60 seconds here. Look, we should not be condi conditioning aid to Israel. The events of October 7th were the worst assault on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. That was done by a terrorist organization called Hamas that must be defeated, and the hostages have to be released before there is to be any discussion about what he's talking about, which is a two-state solution, which, of course, after the defeat of terrorism and the release of the hostages, is something that has to be negotiated by Israelis and Palestinians. Look, none of this prevents and should prevent uh, Israel and the United, with the help of the United States from surging humanitarian assistance for the many innocent Gazans. Uh, these things are not intention, but I have been distraught by a conversation that has completely looked away from the fact that over 100 hostages are still being held by a terrorist organization. And I would urge everyone to understand that Israel is in a very challenging neighborhood. The, the threats are not just emanating from Hamas. They're emanating from Hezbollah. They're emanating from Iran. They're emanating from the Houthis. 
So we have to continue to have an ironclad U.S. Israel relationship while, of course, respecting Mr. Jones. humanitarian law and, and making sure that we surge assistance. Okay, Mr. Jones, thank you. We're up against the clock here. A follow up for both of you. Mr. Jones, going to begin with you. How, in your view, does the conflict end? What do you see as a resolution? 30 seconds. Yeah, so Hamas has to be defeated and the hostages have to be released. Period. Point blank. Then there has to be ro robust diplo diplomacy. It is not on, however, me or Mike Lawler or the United States government to dictate the terms of a two-state solution, a two-state solution being one that would ensure a lasting peace and security in the region. There also has to be complete normalization of relations between Israel and its Arab neighbors. We were getting close to that point. In fact, many people have said Hamas's okay, uh, attack Jones. on October 7 was intended Mr. to Jones, disrupt that, that progress time. that was being made as part Thank of the Thank you Abraham very much, Accords. Mr. Jones. That is time. And Mr. Lawler, the same follow-up to you. How, in your view, does the conflict end? And what do you see as a resolution? 30 seconds. Look, as I've said repeatedly, Hamas must surrender and release all of the hostages. Israel is under threat from Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, other terror networks in the region. Uh, they must be defeated and contained including going after Iran's nuclear weapons program and its ballistic missiles program and ending the illicit oil trade, as I have worked to do by passing the SHIP Act and the Iran-China Energy Sanctions Act. The only way there can be a two-state solution is when Arab-majority nations normalize relations with Israel, starting with Saudi Arabia, getting other Arab partners to okay, the table, and then we can get to a long-term peace plan. Thank